Hi, everyone. Lazel Montgomery here. We're almost at the end of the season, and here's another good one for you. Another Chinese saying coming to you from this podcast show dedicated to the telling of these stories behind many of the great Cheng Yus gifted to us by the ancients and from China's days of yore. And this one, I dare say, it's got to be on the top 10 most well-known Cheng Yus of all time. I actually told this story in an old series I did covering the history of Chinese philosophy when I discussed Meng Tzu. You see, Meng Tzu, he had a heck of a tiger mom, a mother who was selfless when it came to her own well-being, but when it came to her son, there was no sacrifice too great that she'd willingly make to ensure his comfort and protection and to pave the road for his success in life. Let's look at the four characters quickly and then jump right into the story. Meng Mu, San Qian. Meng was short for Meng Zi, the great philosopher from the state of Zhou, who did so much for the study and propagation of the thought of Confucius. He said, all people were born innately good. Still debating that one. Confucius is known as the great sage, but Meng Zi is referred to as the Ya Sheng, or the second sage. The character Mu means a mother. So Meng Mu is a way of saying Meng Zi's mother. San means three, and Qian means to move, move one's residence or the location of a business. Meng Zi's mother, three, move. Not unless you're familiar with this story can you even begin to guess what these characters mean and its significance. This one goes way back to the time of the founding of the Han Dynasty. That's where this story came from, the Western, or former Han to be exact. It came from a work called the Lian Yu Zhuan, or the Biographies of Exemplary Women, written by the great Han scholar and organizer of the Imperial Library, Liu Xiang. Liu Xiang was a court official in the palace of Emperor Cheng of Han. How this book got written is a story in itself. While serving at the court, he noticed a big change in the emperor ever since he married this dancing girl, Zhao Fei Yen. He had made her his empress. But over time, he began to gradually grow colder towards her and slowly lost interest in her altogether. So to distract herself from her marital troubles, Empress Zhao lived a lifestyle of opulence and luxury, decorating her quarters extravagantly and even inviting a host of beautiful men to entertain her. Liu Xiang, seeing this, grew more and more angry and frustrated at the empress's behavior. However, fearing retribution, he didn't dare raise his concerns directly with the emperor. His solution was to painstakingly compile a work that became known as the Biography of Exemplary Women, the Lian Yu Chuan. This work contained stories about the lives of noble and virtuous women, and he finished it and presented it to the emperor. He meant this book as a veiled warning to the emperor about the dangers posed to his court and dynasty by these salacious goings-on in his inner palace. But though the emperor praised the book and rewarded Liu Xiang, he never took any concrete action, and nothing changed in his court. Despite failing to sway the emperor, the book itself was extremely influential, and some of its stories are still famous today, most notably this story of Meng Zi's mother. Meng Zi was a proponent of ruling through mercy, Ren Zhi, and one of his core beliefs was, as I said, that human beings were inherently good, but that this goodness had to be acted upon and drawn out by education. Education is an important part of Meng Zi's philosophy. And one can certainly see why when one considers the extent Meng Zi's mother went to ensure the quality of her own son's education. You see, long ago, when Meng Zi was just a child, his father passed away. And his mother, Widow Zhang, was faithful to her deceased husband and never married again. She raised the child alone. The house in which they lived was close to a graveyard. And as part of their play... The child Meng Zi and his friends learned to imitate the mourners passing by, kneeling, praying, and howling with grief, and pretending that, you know, they were hosting funerals. Seeing this behavior, Meng Zi's mother frowned and said, This is no place to raise a child. 
and she immediately moved them to a house next to a bustling marketplace. But not long after, the child Mengzi learned to mimic the shopkeepers and merchants, and playing at greeting customers and haggling. And seeing this, Mengzi's mother frowned again and said, This is no such place to raise a child either. This time she found a house near a butcher. Again, the child Mengzi quickly learned to imitate the butcher. And he would play around, pretending to kill sheep and carve meat. Mengzi's mother said again, this is another place one shouldn't raise a child. Finally, she found a house next to a school. Every day, scholars went in and out, passing each other politely and bowing ceremoniously the way courtiers did. And the child Mengzi saw this and learned to mimic it as well. And Mengzi's mother was pleased at last, feeling lucky at last after her third time moving her residence. Finally, she was able to say... Here is a good place to raise a child. And there they settled. And of course, Meng Mu's son, her pride and joy, he eventually grew up to become a great sage and philosopher whose words are still studied and acted upon in our modern day. You can use this idiom, Meng Mu San Qian, whenever you want to exclaim what a wonderful mother someone is because of their selflessness and raising their children, always showing up for their kids, doing whatever is necessary to ensure they have a good upbringing and are taught the proper rules and etiquette that were critical to a respectable life and career. Those four characters, Meng Mu, San Qian, they imply that the mother in question, she fiercely protected her children and no sacrifice or inconvenience was too great for her when it came to their well-being and education. She was the living personification of the ideal mother. And with that, we're going to let the curtain fall and bid everyone a fond adieu. I hope you're enjoying this tale told, I dare say, millions of times since it was first written down in the Han Dynasty. Thanks to Emma leading the whole team over at the Cheng Yu Yan Jiu Jungshin. They're already hard at work on the next season's lineup. Thanks, Emma. Okay, class dismissed. Another nice, quick one again. This here's Laszlo Montgomery signing off from the town of Los Angeles, and it's one of my deepest hopes that we'll all convene again next time for another exciting episode of the Chinese Sayings Podcast.